I have a 15 inches, is it a 15 inches? This is a 16 inches, okay, so this is a 16 inches. Um, in my previous video, um, I did mention some of the ways you can easily spot the difference between 15 inches and the 16 inches. Um, when the machines are placed um, side by side, um, I'm talking about the 2019s and, and below. Um, the 2019, the, the, the first 16 inches design, which is, was in 2019. When you put that beside the 2015, uh, sorry, a 15 inches, 2019, 2018, you may not immediately pick up what size is they are, especially when the devices are closed. However, one of the ways you can easily identify 2015, um, 15 inches and a 16 inches, uh, 20, a 16 inches and a 15 inches, I'm just gonna get one. Okay, so um, this form factor, this is uh, the design for 15 inches up until 2019, um, until the, the 15 inches was discontinued. So 15 inches basically um, 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 has been discontinued from 2019. From, 20, uh, from 2020, you only have the 16 inches, the 14 inches, um, and then obviously the M2s, which are also 13 inches. Um, so, but the 16 inches, but the 15 inches has, I mean, there's been no refresh on the 15 inches. You only now have the 16 inches. Now, if you place these two machines side by side, you may not notice the difference in terms of which is a 15 inches, which is, which is a 16 inches. And if you kind of place them one over the other, that's the only time you, you can tell, oh, okay, yeah, there is an inch difference. But just placing them side by side, you may not be able to tell exactly which is 15 inches and which is a 16 inches. Now, if you open the device, uh, then I'm just gonna open, let's just open the other one. So, if you open both, you will see one of the. You see that the trackpad are pretty much the same. Um, uh, but the one, the, the one thing you can use to determine which is 15 inches and which is 16 inches is the layout of the top row, which is the touch ID. This also has a touch ID, yes. But the touch ID of a 16 inches is separate from the touch bar. And the escape key is just, is just separate from the touch bar. Now, this is a design that uh, basically um, Apple took with the inception of the M1s, the 2020s, uh, the, the 2020s, uh, the 2020 Intel design, the M1 design, the 2021 design, where they have this, the touch bar being separate from the touch ID as well as the escape key. However, the previous design from 2019 and below. Uh, the 2019s, uh, uh, even the 13 inches, they, they implemented this, this design where you have the touch bar and the touch ID being on the same row and the escape key, the escape key, uh, the escape option being part of the touch bar. But that was, like I said, so when you see these two machines side by side, side by side, the one way you can tell that this is a 16 inches and this is a 15 inches is it's by looking at the keyboard, the keyboard structure, the escape key being separate, being the physical key. Whereas here it's, a, it's it's part of the touch bar, and then the touch ID is also a, a, a separate a separate button uh, on the machine. So basically, that is how you can tell 
the easy tell the difference between the 20 uh, between the 16 inches and the 15 inches and the 16 inches um, it's a design that Apple uh, implemented in 2019 and they carried that over to um, the M1s the, uh, the M1 Pro the M1 Pro Max and also the M2s as well they still continued on that device and then the 15 inches the last time we saw a 15 inches design from Apple was in 2019 and um, so far the only the only inches that are that are still maintained are the 13 inches for MacBook Airs and the MacBook Pros which is the M1s and the M2s the 14 inches and then the 16 inches so at, at, at the moment uh, there is uh, Apple has not refreshed um, the 2019 so uh, basically I mean the 15 inches so um, that can easily be said that uh, the 16 inches has replaced uh, the 15 inches in any case uh, that is just that about that so what do we have here we have a 16 inches and the issue says it's dead so the first thing we want to do, as you guys already are aware, before we do, uh, before we connect power to the device, the first thing we want to do is we want to uh, take out the back cover, identify the state of the board before we introduce power uh, to to the machine. Okay, the back cover is out. Um, let's just uh, put the screws at the back. I usually like to put the, the screws of the machine at the back of the, the cover of the machine. Okay, let's put that aside. Uh, someone has been here because we can see that the trackpad shield is missing, uh, and then also the battery data cable. Uh, that the battery data cable is usually a shield over this that is also missing. So someone has definitely been here. Uh, we're not sure exactly um, why. I guess um, they try to maybe fix the issue that the device is having. Okay, so um, in almost every Apple line, there is uh, what is referred to as a common failure. Or um, uh, there is uh, what is referred to as like a like a factory type of failure or a failure that you would expect from each and almost every of the Apple lineups. Now the the, the 16 inches 2019 specifically 2019 uh, they are very common when it comes to um, a failure on the PP bus voltage line, which would result from sometimes a dead demand which is SSD and sometimes it would just be um, um, a regular failed component on the PPOS voltage line so um, and other times you may have a short on a 3 volt line uh, uh, also on, on your 16 inches so because of this known common issue what we do it's uh, I mean on, on the 16 inches that is dead the first thing we want to do is we want to disconnect the battery obviously and then we want to check for short on our PP bus line. Now we can check now the, the this board. This is an 80 0 one uh, seven hundred. Uh, is that what it is? Okay, let's quickly check. 80.0.0170. Okay, let's use the other right and the board view. 80.0.0170. Yes, that's it. 80.0.0170. That is the board. That's the board view. Uh, that's the board number of our 16 inches. Okay, now we can identify the the the, the PP bus voltage um, can be measured at F700, F7000, and F7001. So these are two fuses. As we can see, it says PP bus. Can you pick it up from there? Yeah. Okay. So it says that PP bus. So we will be measuring to see if we have a short there. And uh, those two fuses um, are these two here. The one that you have a sign that says one two one two, which is twelve volt. So, so first thing we want to do is we switch our multimeter to um, switch our multimeter to a continuity mode. 
I saw that in the previous video, you, you some of the shots with multi returns are not captured, especially when. Um, so if you if you're trying to capture this and that at the same time, at least uh, you kind of capture when the, the probes are going to the component and then go to the probe. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's see. Let's just see right there. Let's see what we have. Okay, that's good. We don't have a shoulder now, people go slide. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is we want to see if we have a uh, short on our three volt line. That we can check here. Uh, yes, here. Right. Mm, is that the. Uh, let's see. Uh, we want to see if we have a short on our um, uh, NAND, which. Mm, yeah, we can check for that on this caps here uh, that okay so you can check see if we have a short about 2.5 volt line here and yes we do have a short and then on the other side yes we do have a short so that is a uh, so those are commonly when, when I'm working on the 16 inches the first thing I do is I check for a short on my PP bus uh, if I don't have a short the next thing I, I, I usually would do is I come to so um, I, I, I was this was what I was referring to as a three volt line. It's actually a two point five volt line. So I was actually thinking about it. Uh, I was um, I had a different voltage line stuck in my head. So I was talking about a two point five volt line. So that I can easily identify from the, these two caps here. I can measure for that from, from these two caps here. Now easy. So once I measure that, and then I, I then it basically points me that. So oftentimes when this is the case, what happens is you have a failed cap. Um, on, on your 2.5 volt line. Most of the time, it's not necessarily a failed NAND chip. We're hoping that's not the case now. So this is the common thing that I do before. So if I had, if I didn't find a short on this line, I mean, just like we didn't find a short on our PP bus line, the next thing I do is I check, I check for short here. Before I, before I follow the regular power sequence of this, of the machine. I check for a short here. If I don't find a short on the PP bus, then I go check for a short on the 2.5 volt line. If I don't find a short there, the next thing I would have done was to uh, put the battery back and try to put the machine into DFE mode. And then see if, uh, and then when I put the machine into DFE mode, the next thing I would do is to just to check uh, if a revive option will fix the problem. If a revive option doesn't fix the problem, then I will obviously will have to make contact with the client to find out if it's okay to. Uh, to use the, the restore option because the, the, the restore option will wipe the, the data on on, 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 on on the machine. And then just so uh, from my experience, oftentimes um, when and when the revive option doesn't fix a problem, oftentimes the restore option doesn't fix it. Oftentimes. So if revive doesn't fix it, it's so oftentimes so what it would mean is the problem is beyond um, and uh, the concept of say uh, a software which would which which uh, DFU would be able to uh, basically uh, address. So it usually, if if it doesn't go through in in, in uh, uh, du during the the, the the revive mode, it means that it's an issue that is beyond the process of our DFU mode. Okay, now that we have confirmed that we have a short on our two point five volt line, let us now uh, check out the board. You see at you see, up until this moment, we are not connecting our our charger. Like I keep saying to you guys, before you connect your charger, be sure to know what state your board is in before you connect your charger, because you do not want to do more harm to the device. Now, after that is done, the next thing we basically want to now that we know, uh, we are hoping that this um, issue it's not going to be sustained um, in the NAND itself. Uh, because that is going to make it a delayed repair, number one. Number two, it's also going to make it a little bit more expensive in terms of uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the probe be a little bit more expensive. And third, um, this, and, third of, uh, and then also the, another disadvantage of, of it being, of being a nine, it's also that the client will also not um, have access to their data because uh, we will now have to replace uh, a damaged nine. Uh, so uh, pretty much uh, that it uh, and is that okay. and um, 
uh, whenever you are taking out, especially if this is your first, if it's your first time, and even if it's not your first time, it is very, um, I usually consider it inappropriate for you to misplace, um, to, to mismatch your screws. Always be, try to understand your screws, know which goes into where. Um, personally, the way I grade, uh, um, the way I rate a technician is uh, by um, how they are able to place the screws. I mean, how rightly the screws are placed. So it's important that you kind of, each and every machine that you work on, know how the screws are placed, where each and every screw goes, so that you do not misplace, uh, you know, the screws. And then at the same time, uh, that may actually, uh, that may actually be a problem to the, to the machine. Imagine uh, sometimes you have a long screw damage. Uh, basically, you're having a screw that is, uh, in, in terms of application, that is longer. And then what happens is you, you, you tend to create additional damage on that machine. And then the, the, the sad reality of that is the client wouldn't know that that has happened. Um, they, they would say, I mean, my boss would say, my, my, um, my previous boss would say to me that how further damage uh, uh, can it possibly be? I mean, how further dead can it be? It's already dead. But um, there are different stages or phases of a dead device. So uh, there is, um, I mean, there is that stage where the device is dead, but it can be fixed. And then there is also a stage where the device is dead, but it cannot be fixed, given uh, the type of damage that the device has sustained. So uh, you don't want to damage a client's device. And it's unfair because they may not know. They will just assume, OK, yeah, I brought it. It was dead. And now I'm getting it back also dead. But they wouldn't know that you have actually contributed uh, to the problem. And they, this, they may never have the device fixed because you, break, you probably, um, you probably uh, put a hole on their board uh, because you long screw damage the board. And that may probably be like a, a CPU section of, you know, anything, you know. So we try as much as we can to, to it's important to understand your screws, know where they go, and uh, and always be aware. Sometimes you may, you may just, uh, there are genuine mistakes where you, you, you kind of, uh, you look at a screw and then you think, well, maybe this screw goes here. But then you have to try as much as you can to be engaged, you know, when you are putting your machine back. When you are assembling the machine, so in in case where you generally find oh this screw seems longer than what should be here, that you easily pick up. But that will be if you are engaged. I mean, if if you are taking note of exactly what you're doing. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay, the board is out. Let's now let's put the shell side and then flip the board to the other side so if we check um if we check our voltage line we have to the 2.5 voltage that we're having issues with um we see that we have um um our communication with u9 u9300 and then we also have communication with u9200 both are nine chips to flip to the other side we have communication with u9100 and then u9400 and then on, on that side we have Caps, caps, and then we have a regulator as well, U95 80, uh, which is basically the 2.5 volt regulator IC. So obviously, what that, that is, uh, that's basically a buff converter, which you take a high voltage and then turn it into a low one. So what you want to do now is you want to flip the board to the other side and see if we have a problem here. Hopefully, we really, really hoping that we have in a failed cap or a failed U95 80, which has, uh, which is creating uh, or generating the shorts that we are having. We do not want to have a short in either. U9400, U9100, or U9200 and uh, U9300. So now let's flip the board to the other side. That will be flip the board like this, which is on this side, the left. Let's uh, take a closer look on that side of the board. Uh, okay, let's test that out. Just, uh, just so that you guys know, let's just measure that again so you guys have an idea of what we're dealing with. We are having a short on the 2.5 volt line. That is it. Uh, so that's a short. On the other side, that is down. So we're definitely having a short. Now, when we flip the box, so here we can see that we do not see 
any component that may be our problem there, which is why we have moved to the other side of the board. Uh, and then now flipping the board to the other side. So this is uh, the other section of the board, which uh, I talked about the U98, U95 AT and then the other uh, components that are here. We have an inductor also. So let's uh, see. So from what I can see, this cap here looks funny. I'm just I'm going to show you guys that cap. C95, C9588 looks funny. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see, you guys can see that. So that is C95. And that looks funny. That doesn't really look, especially on this side of, uh, of, of, of the cap, looks funny. Uh, if you look at this, for example, as an example, you see that you still have LD pads here that on, on, on both sides. But on this side, that seems not to be the case. So that looks funny. So what I'm going to do also, uh, because of this, uh, because of the Nantube here, at, I mean, it's also not safe to have heat around this section of the board. But I mean, if you if you have to, for example, if we needed to replace U9580, then that would, that would, that would, we would obviously have to do. But then we will be very careful as to how much heat um, that we uh, are putting in this area. So what I want to do is I'm just going to knock, easily knock off um, that cap. Okay, that is knocked off. Now, after that, now the next thing I want to do is uh, I want to now check again to see what do you say. So then I want to now check now to see if we still have a short. We are hoping we no longer have a short. Okay, alhamdulillah, we no longer have a short. That's a good one. We don't we no longer have a short now. So um, you may the, the next thing will now be it's uh, putting that cap back. So one of the reasons why that cap failed is because of the, the position of the cap, where the, because of the edge of the cap. So usually we have, uh, uh, so usually the caps that are on this side of the board and on the wings of, of, of your board, they are common to, fa to failure because of, the, because of moisture. So um, the question would be, uh, should we put that cap back? Yeah, we can put it back. But even if we do not put it back, that it's not going to be a problem. So what you want to do is uh, we want to uh, put that cap back. But like I said, even if you do not put it back, that, it's not, that is not a problem. Um, you, compared to what you roll it in place, there are... Uh, there are other caps on the line that play similar role as, as at it. So even if it's not present, it's not going to do any harm to the machine. Actually, the machine uh, will not even notice it's, it's not being uh, present. So, uh, but uh, for the sake of, uh, uh, but for this repair, we'll just uh, uh, have to put it back. Uh, let's wait for, okay. And you guys can see up until this moment, we are still yet to connect our charger. But right now, it is safe to connect our charger. So I'm just going to get a donor board to grab that cap. That cap, by the way, that cap we can get from any, from any board. But just to be, you know, since we have a donor board for it, so why not just rather grab a donor board instead of uh, getting me from another, another board. So, grab a donor board. Uh, that cap is also taken out from here. Let's see. Uh, most likely that cap will not be. Uh, let's see.
Try to place something over and then let's see the same. So just before we leave, uh, we leave here. We also we want to check on the other side of the ring, just to be sure we don't have any cap that may potentially fail. So if you see any cap that is looking funny, uh, it will be better to have it addressed now, so that it does not um, basically become a problem in the future. Okay, so I send it to you fine. And the next thing we want to do is I want to see if we have um, a working board. So also we do that, we try to dust, especially both sides, uh, the right side, and then this side as well. And then when you're here, I usually say when you are doing back here, be very careful. The torch ID breaks easy, especially if you are uh, yank it to an opposite direction. So you be very careful not to break the torch ID cable. Because the, the torch ID is paired to the board once it breaks, you need to basically repair that. And uh, Apple doesn't um, release that to the public. So you don't want to just get put yourself in such a mess of a uh, torch ID. So what you do after this, um, all of the tests, all of the, the complaints that we gave Jama, the, the for the 1502, we test and see if it does that, eh? and then we know what to do.
So don't worry about the weather thing. I mean, that's document <laughs> weather. It's uh, you know, it's a lot of something to. Say again. Yeah, but uh, but also, why should he worry about that? I mean, that's that is something the owner of the machine will worry about, yeah. And uh, I I believe very few persons check whether on their computer. Most people they check on their phone. Okay, we're just uh, I'm trying to connect cables and then we can test to see uh, if hopefully we'll have a working machine now. Okay. Uh, oh. seem to be in place. And then the battery. So um, I did talk about in my previous video the difference between a 16 inches um, battery screw and a 13 inches. This is 16 inches. It's uh, longer, just so you know, so you don't uh, lose it. But 15 inches or 13 inches battery screw will not work on a, on a 16 inches unless you find a way to kind of uh, tweak it. But uh, yeah, so make sure you don't lose the screw for, for, for the battery. Okay, that is done. Let's now connect our charger. Just connected. We have haptic feedback from the trackpad. That's a good thing. We don't have fan spin yet. Mm. Uh, the fans are just. I think I saw the fan try to start. Uh, still have, uh, we do have haptic feedback, but nothing on the screen, and no fan spin as yet. So um, sometimes um, when this happens, the device might get stuck in either recovery. So we will now check to see if the device is stuck in recovery because um, the device, we have haptic feedback. So which means the device is making its way into um, SO state. But uh, OK, it seemed to be cycling. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, so let's see if the device is stuck in recovery. Uh, so we now need to put the machine into DFU mode. Because it's Intel, 
the, we'll use the port that it's uh, closer to. So basically, the second port. If it was AM, if it was an M1, we'll be using the first port. So because it's Intel, we use the second port for um, for our, to get the machine into DFU mode. Now let's head on to our software, which is Apple Configurator. Mm, okay, it doesn't seem the machine is stuck in DFU, in, in our recovery because if that was the case, we should have the we should have uh, the machine in recovery. But that's not the case. Let's now um, try to put the machine into DFU, see what happens. Okay, machine is in DFU. The first thing we want to do is we want to try to um, um, to revive the machine. Uh, we really hope that works. Uh, we also hope that nothing has happened to um, Nothing has happened to the SSD uh, when uh, when this happened, when, when the short happened. So uh, let's hope that uh, that works. Okay, that's a good thing. Uh, okay, that's also good. Means uh, the machine is trying to communicate, and it says uh, it's still in the store. Okay. 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 That's not good. <laughs> that is not good. Uh, error six. Uh, that's not good. That is not good. Uh, that's not good. Uh, that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. Uh, 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 that's not good. Uh, that's not a good thing. Uh, okay. Uh, that's not good. Let's uh, try that again. Um, no, no, no. You know, I, uh, so, so obviously we uh, the the short we, we didn't have a short. Um, so, but uh, nah, that's not good. But, uh, that error six is that's not good. Uh, now nah, I'm, I'm afraid that uh, the SSD might have uh, one of the nine. I'm uh, very fearful. Uh, okay. Mm, mm. So and, and yes, we we again will. So after this now, so what we want to go check is, like Peter said, let's check the value of. Um, we're supposed to have a two point five volt on that line. Nah, that's not good. Uh, that's not good. You see the changes here. Oh, I don't. You probably don't you notice it. Yeah, it's not, it's not good, it's not good, it's still there, uh, okay, uh, okay, 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 uh, it's not a good thing, it's not a good thing, mm, ah, okay, uh, so let's see what we have on it's, it's, it actually would have been it would be fine if we have like a one point something volt on the two point five volt line, then that way uh, uh, we can can we can actually blame you ninety five eighty. Uh, if we have two point five volt line and it's uh, yeah we should, yeah if you just see what we have on our PD bus okay yeah that's because of the battery being connected ten point five. Let's see what we have on our two point five volt line. Uh, it's not good. We actually have our two point five volt. Would have been better if we don't have it. Okay, let's see. And this, okay, that's fine. Let's see here. Okay. Okay, that's good. We don't have it. We don't have two point five volt here. That's good. Okay. Now let's quickly do this. Let's uh, go find out why we don't have our two point five wood on that section of the board. Um, and also, it it wouldn't be that that cap 
I mean, the cap, it's no, no that that's important. I mean, it, it, I mean, no. Uh, what? The cap being four. Okay, but this is it. If the cap was forty, we would still have a short, and if and then we would, the machine would not even be able to go into SO partially go into SO state. You understand? So no, the cap. So um, let us hope that U95. Uh, U9580 failed. That would be good because uh, we just we can just replace that, which is the regulator that I told you about, the bulk converter for TV bus voltage and 2.5 voltage. That would be great if that's the issue. Uh, yeah. So, so you see what I you see what I'm talking about when I when I when I talk about if revive then fix the issue. It's usually it will be like a, 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 it's something beyond not not so imagine if i just go ahead and restore do you understand even though that's not the, the exactly so let's see what's hap what's what happened uh, it's interesting it's let's make sure let's see what's what happened what happened what happened That is strange. That is very strange. That is very strange. I wasn't thinking you were going to, to replace it. Yeah, but that is very strange because. So, don't tell. Wait. Oh, I see what happened. So the, yeah, the solder, together. yes, the solder was too much. I saw that was too much. Uh, but then, how did it then start? <laughs> Do you understand? It wasn't sitting properly. It was one, as you were saying, the soda was the other side. Oh, uh, and let's check the cap. Let's just be sure. Okay, cap it's fine. So our problem is, ah, uh, that that really got me. I I, I that really got me, because uh, uh, error six it's an error that, that basically asks you to look at your 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 SSC section of the board, and I was uh, I mean I would never have thought that, because I mean I know it it, it would almost be uh, one out of one hundred that the cap replaces faulty. But uh, what has happened here is uh, there was too much soda and it was basically creating a bridge. Hmm. Like I said, we, we don't have to replace it. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure it was uh, already also in, in future. I don't know. Isn't it going to fail again? Yeah, that, that that is that's that is the thing. But now, because there is more than one of that cap in that section, also, so not only that, yeah. So which means not only is it the only one that has the potential to fail, even also that has the potential to fail. So you see the way I'm pointing the hot air. This way, because I don't want anything that way. <laughs> yeah, it's you, you don't you don't want to uh, you don't want to have anything the other way. Okay, so <sighs> it's uh, in that. That's interesting. <laughs> Uh, it's interesting. So, which means, which 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 means that, um, what which means in that in the state that it were previously, when we tested, if we had tested it, we should see that the trackpad activates, just like what it's doing now. Do you understand? Okay, so or oh, you mean before you even yeah to... yeah so now let's see if we have because initially we checked to see if we have a, a two point five volt there and then it was not present 
which is that side we're having zero volt, and then the other side we're obviously getting a 2.5 volt. So now let's see, uh, see if we have anything different. Uh, we're hoping we have something different because now we no longer have a show. Let's see, we have 2.5 volt here. 2.5 volt is present, and then on the other side. Yes, so 2.5 volt is present. So technically this is a working board. Uh, so what we now quickly want to do, Peter is going to put put, it, put the board in the shell, have it tested. I'm quickly going to go for uh, prayer. Then we'll come back, we'll do a short video just to show you guys um, uh, what has happened. So, but for now, Peter is just going to put the board in the shell. When I will come back, we'll resume the video. And uh, yeah, we'll show you guys that uh, we have a working board. Most likely we don't have to uh, perform any type of revive or restore option. Okay, I'll see you guys shortly after Salah. Um, uh, uh, Peter did uh, put the machine together and uh, he also did uh, an SMC reset because um, uh, the first time he, um, he put the machine together um, the, there was um, he said uh, there was only haptic feedback but there was the machine was not posting so he had to do an SMC reset and uh, after that, and that's it, the machine is up and running, and uh, we have um, a successful repair. As you guys can see, we have an Apple logo, and a fan screen, and uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, so now this is going to go through the standard uh, testings, and uh, yeah, I will uh, see you guys uh, in the next one. This is going to go this client is gonna be happy because the files are saved uh, just there was no need and uh, also um, this is also why I, I, I did mention before that it's important if uh, usually when you get error 6 in your DFU mode so what it's basically prompting you to is to check out the section of your um, your drive which is in this case your SSD uh, yeah and then something as Peter was saying that um, after we replace the cap, we're supposed to check the values before um, before having to test it. That's very important because it, even though it, it, it looks like a small uh, mistake, that would have been a major mistake because imagine if that short had translated into uh, now having a damaged um, uh, a damaged nine chip just because we didn't check before before so that's also another lesson that uh, regardless of how how sure you, you think that the, 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 the solution you offered is please give it a you know check confirm your values before um, you introduce power to the device Okay, pretty much this is going to go through uh, our Zen briefcase and then it gets tested and then the client can now uh, close the mission. Thank you guys. I'll see you guys in the next one.